looks like uh, the narrative, uh, pr uh, President Mester, that the American people are going to be recovering more quickly than everybody anticipated might not be correct. I mean, they're still spending money, but not at an increasing pace. Yeah, I mean, I think this is probably what we should expect, right? We have pent up demand coming back as vaccinations have been distributed more widely. And that's a strong demand. We also have supply issues affecting the economy. And this interplay between demand and supply is what we're seeing in some of the data coming out, whether it be today's retail sales report or the labor market report. So the volatility month to month, I think, is something we should expect. I think that what's happening, though, is that we do see the recovery continuing. It's just that we're going to have these month to month changes depending on which factors are more dominant. Is it the supply side or is it demand side? And I think the bottom line is it just, you know, we're really at the beginning of this vaccination, widely distributed part of the recovery. And I think we just have to, you know, wait and be a little bit patient and let the, the recovery continue. Well, we just got the uh, CDC advice that people don't have to wear masks anymore. I can tell you people in Boston are still wearing masks as they are in New York. Uh, do you think that reluctance to go out and spend is going to fade rapidly now? Well, it's hard to see how rapidly. I mean, I myself, you know, I'm still, you know, wearing masks when I go outside. I think it all is a good sign, though, that we are getting to the other side of this. And I think that the vaccinations still have some further way to go. I think we need to distribute them more evenly across um, the country. But as, as a, that continues, as we can relax mask wearing for those who have been vaccinated, all of that is on a good path to get us back to some semblance of normal. And I do think people are going to feel more comfortable re-engaging. I, I am feeling more comfortable re-engaging, and I think I'm representative of others that, you know, we have a reluctance, but now as things continue on and, you know, we've intellectualized the fact that we have gotten vaccinated and we are protected, we're going to be more able and willing to go out and re-engage. And I think we're going to see that, you know, over the rest of the year. Oh, this is where I put in my plug to come visit you in Cleveland and do the next interview there. Uh, neither you or I have had a real chance to dig into these retail sales numbers, but the interesting thing about retail sales is they're reported in dollar terms. And so one would have thought that there would be a big impact from the April CPI numbers. Uh, what was your reaction to that and the idea that maybe inflation is accelerating more quickly than the Fed anticipated? Well, again, I think we're seeing the clash between, you know, pent up demand, the surge in demand, and some of the supply issues that we're seeing. And coupled on, you know, with that also is the fact that the month, you know, year over year numbers are really incorporating those very low inflation readings we had um, last year. As those, you know, come out of the numbers, we're going to just see mathematically inflation going up. But no doubt, you know, we're seeing some real supply constraints in particular areas. I think you were mentioning lumber earlier. There's commodity prices. There's energy prices now with the pipeline issue. So you're, we're seeing those in the inflation data. I think the real question for monetary policy is, is that going to, you know, abate over the rest of the year as supply comes back on, as some of the stimulus um, checks that people have um, are used up. And so I think we're going to see that play out. And my baseline scenario for inflation is that we're going to have high, higher inflation this year, above 2%. But then as some of those constraints on supply ease, um, I think we're going to see inflation go back down and we'll have to, you know, monitor that as we go forward. I'm really focused on inflation expectations because I think that is really where, you know, you'll begin to see if those go up um, and they're going up a little bit now, we'll have to look to see whether longer run expectations are going up. And that's really a, a key to me in terms of, you know, where inflation is likely to go um, over the longer run. Uh, Wall Street's favorite drinking game is uh, the word transitory with Fed officials. How do you define transitory? How long is it? When would you know whether you're right or wrong about your inflation forecast? Right. So again, I think transitory is a word that was meant to convey whether those are supply issues that will abate over time 
and that's what push pushing up prices or whether it really is in these underlying inflation measures so far we don't see right much impact on measures like the cleveland fed's median cpi and other measures that really try to look at what the trend in inflation is and the key to that is this real inflation expectation so it really is going to depend on how long it takes for supply conditions to to ease and get back to normal and that could take some time it's going to depend on what commodity we're looking at it's going to depend on what part of the economy we're looking at you know we all have talked about the chip you know shortage that's going to take some time when we talk to our um contacts in the auto industries many of them are saying it's going to be six months to even nine months for that to get back to normal so some of those transitory gives the impression of over and done very quickly i don't think that's what we'll see i think some of those are going to last longer but whether that gets embedded in underlying inflation rates which is what the fed looks at that's a different story and that in that sense i think a lot of the supply conditions that are pushing up inflation now will abate over time. Well, there's definitely going to be a staring contest between the Federal Reserve and the people on trading desks on Wall Street over the next couple of months as we get this economic data. Uh, are you going to be able to resist pressure from the markets if they see uh, concern about inflation and start raising rates? I, I'm sure you'll tell me, yes, you can. But traders also remember December of 2018. You know, we have been very clear, I hope, in um, telling everyone sort of our strategy and the fact that we want to see, right, it in the data. We want to not just base our, our policy actions on what we project is going to be happening, but also seeing it really in the data. And I think that's a really good strategy for times like this where you have demand and supply factors clashing and coming together and the outcomes in the data. So again, you know, I think we're going to be looking at outcomes. Our forward guidance tells us, you know, tells the markets and the public where what we're looking at. We want to see inflation go up and we want to see it be on track to go above 2%. Um, and that's, you know, what we're going to be looking at and basing our on the inflation side. And we want to get back to maximum employment. You know, we still are, in spite of the pretty good labor market data we've gotten over the past several months, despite last month's little bit disappointment in that report, we're still making progress on the labor market side. But, right, again, supply issues are affecting those numbers, too. And, you know, we have to sort of continue on the path we're on until we get more people back into the labor market um, and more progress towards our goals. So, again, well, that, I think we're seeing this play out in both labor markets and product markets. And the Fed is just going to be focused on outcomes to see, that you know, and recalibrate the, our, our policy appropriately to the outcomes. Uh, what you're saying about the employment report, um, do you have a read on what happened there? Do you think that uh, the enhanced unemployment benefits play a major role, as uh, a lot of uh, at least politicians think? So I think a lot of things that are going on in the labor market still reflect some unease that we were talking about earlier in terms of reengaging. And I also believe that, the and we hear this from our contacts all the time, the child care, school reopening, that is affecting the labor markets. I think people are making decisions based on those things but the fact that they have the unemployment benefits gives them the financial wherewithal to actually be making those decisions whereas in the past they may not have been able to make the the decision they would like to meet be able to meet make because they didn't have the wherewithal so in that sense it's interacting but i think the main drivers are these other considerations in terms of the virus and schools and that's why i think we're going to see some of that downward pressure on labor supply abate too over time because i think as schools reopen as people get more comfortable with the vaccinations being widely distributed i think people will feel more comfortable coming back into the labor market and we're going to be watching for that i certainly will be watching for that um, as we go through the rest of the year well, let me ask you this uh, a number of people including your former colleague bill dudley the former president of the new york fed have been speculating lately that the economy could rebound more quickly and more strongly than people anticipated and that by the time you get around to looking at 
actual realized data, you will have passed uh, maximum employment and the inflation danger will rise and then you're going to have to raise rates farther and faster than you thought. Uh, what's your view on that? So I think, you know, we are going to be watching very closely how the economy and the recovery evolves over the year um, as we get more data in. So and we're guided by our our dual mandate goals, progress towards those goals. So yes, there's, you know, uncertainty around the outlook. There's risk around the outlook. Things could, you know, pick up faster than we anticipate. Things could go slower than we anticipate. And we're prepared for that. I think we're in a good place right now with our policy, and we're going to adjust it as appropriate depending on how the actual recovery um, progresses. So that's why this is, you know, not the time to really be adjusting anything on policy. It really is a time for watchful waiting, seeing how the recovery evolves, seeing how some of the supply constraints dissipate or not, seeing what happens on the labor side, um, and keeping focused on our dual mandate goals. So. You know, I understand where Bill's coming from. I think the way I would, what would I would say in response is, we're we're well positioned now for upside and downside risks, and we're just going to have to be patient where we are now and wait a bit, li little bit longer, looking at the data to see where this recovery is going. But I'm very, I have a positive outlook. I'm, I think the outlook is bright. I just think that we need to let it continue on a little bit longer. Um, because, you know, opening up the economy after such a deep, deep uh, shock downward, right, is proving to be, you know, there's some, some stumbles along the way. And I think we should have expected that. And I think that's what we're seeing in the data right now. Well, let me ask you one last quick question. Do you think it's a foregone conclusion that when you finally talk about or talk about, talk about uh, tapering, that you're going to get a taper tantrum, that the markets are going to try to reprice immediately and we're going to have a market disruption? Well, I mean, obviously that would not be a good outcome. I think we've been very clear and Chair Powell's been very clear that we are going to be communicating well in advance um what our policy stance is is and where it's going and I, my hope is that um we'll be articulate enough um and explain enough our rationales and and our um, expectations that we will avoid the worst um in in terms of the financial markets i mean volatility in financial markets is what financial markets are um, we just want to make sure that you know we're communicating as best we can our rationales and our approach to policy and, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how, how well we do that.